Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be going over topical antimicrobials for wound care. But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it does help my channel reach more people. So let's get started. So what are antimicrobials? Um, so antimicrobials are agents that kill microorganisms, okay? Uh, antimicrobials is an umbrella term that includes disinfectants, antiseptics, and antibiotics. So a disinfectant refers to a chemical that inhibits or kills um, microbes on inanimate objects, okay? Such as a dressing card, instruments. Uh, so an example of this could be alcohol. An antiseptic are used to inhibit or kill microorganisms presence within a wound or on intact skin. Many disinfectants and antiseptics have um, broad spectrum antibacterial um, activity and anti, um, antimicrobial resistance is uncommon, okay? Antibiotics are naturally occurring um, or synthetically produced chemical substances that can act selectively and can be administered both topically or systematically. Um, microbial resistance to antibiotics is common and an increasing international concern. Antibiotics are not normally used topically in wound care, um, we'll use more of the antimicrobials instead of antibiotics. Um, but there are some cases where we have used antibiotics, um, but it's not common. And I just I, I just wanted to make that really clear. Antibiotics orally, yes, they're taken for um, if you have a deep spreading infection, but using antibiotics topically okay, is what I was saying is we don't use that as frequent. So what are antimicrobial dressings? So antimicrobial dressings refer to wound dressings that have an antiseptic agent incorporated in it, okay? Um, traditionally, the term antiseptic has been used to refer to solutions that damage healthy tissue. Such solutions have a broad action and can be highly effective in killing microorganisms, but they may compromise healthy tissues, okay? So their ongoing wound management has been, um, in wound management has been questioned um, and limited to reducing the load of pathogens on intact skin, okay? So there have been recent advances in antiseptic technology having led to the development of a number of products that are less harmful to healthy tissues. So whenever we're using an antimicrobial or anything like this antiseptic, we want to consider tissue toxicity, okay? If we do not have a sign of um, infection, we don't want to be using antimicrobials, okay? So if you're not sure how to determine what type of infection or if you have an, an infection that actually needs to be treated, um, I will link down below a video to, it's called Nerves and Stonies, and it's how to determine um, the risk of, or sorry, it's how to determine whether or not a wound has an infection, whether it's local or whether it's deep and spreading. And that way you'll know how to treat it either topically or if you need an antibiotic, okay? Um, so there are um, new technology um, antiseptics that we do use in wound care. So silver, caroxamir, iodine, uh, PHMB, and honey, okay? These dressings um, incorporate antiseptics and can successfully be used to treat and manage, reduce the load of a variety of pathogens, not only bacteria, um, partly due to the rising prevalence of drug resistant antibiotics. These antimicrobial dressings are being increasingly used, okay? Because antibiotics, people are becoming resistant Okay, bacteria is becoming resistant. We need to use things. And, and this is why 
it, it kind of drives me crazy when a doctor puts somebody on an antibiotic when they really don't need it for their wound. Like they have like zero nil signs of deep spreading infection, something we can treat topically. So we really, really, really need to be using those nerds and Sonys to determine what we're dealing with. Um, antimicrobial dressings offer many benefits. So they're relatively easy to use. They're widely available, um, frequently cost less than antibiotics, um, available without prescription. So, I mean, some of them you do need a prescription to actually um, order them. Um, but for the most part, you can get a lot of them without a prescription. And then they have less resistance. Okay, so here are all the antiseptics um, that are really available. Now they come in all different forms, okay? So just like your silver, um, it comes in creams and pregnated dressings. You can get like nanoparticle silver. So all different types of silver dressings. Um, you have your iodine, so povidone iodine comes in solutions, creams, ointment sprays, and pregnated dressings. Um, and then it comes in like the paste ointment powders, okay? The chlorhexidine, um, it comes in a solution powder, impregnated dressings. Chlorhexidine may be used um, as an alternative for patients who are allergic to iodine, okay? Um, now iodine, if somebody has an allergy to shellfish, they, you shouldn't use iodine or if they have uh, thyroid issues, it should be avoid avoided. Um, PHMB, so it comes in a solution or impregnated dressing, honey. Um, it comes as literally a liquid honey, so like your meta honey or um, impregnated dressings. Acetic acid, that's your solution, so it's a diluted vinegar solution. Um, potassium permanganate, it comes in solution or tablets. So wound bioburden in antimicrobial dressings. So all wounds contain microorganisms, okay? Yet a lot of times, the majority of times, it's not infected, okay? And will go on to heal successfully, okay? That is why I say so much, we're not using antimicrobials if we don't need to, okay? They all contain a slight level of tissue toxicity, okay? So it will impair wound healing, okay, if there is no, uh, like, if, if it's not needed, okay? So we're only using antimicrobials if we have signs and symptoms of clinical infection, okay? Um, bio burden of wound, they, they're normally in balance, okay? So you have the immune system and the bio burden, they're in balance. However, if this balance shifts in favor of the microbes, or if a wound healing is imp impaired, the microorganisms multiply and invade tissue resulting in a prolonged and inappropriate inflammatory response, tissue damage, and delayed wound healing. If left unchecked, systematic illness can occur, okay? When a shift in balance occurs, immediate intervention is needed, okay? So as soon as we see that a wound is, is having signs of, of bio burden and um, that the microbes are kind of taking over the wound, we need to be treating this immediately. Okay, so when should we be using antimicrobial therapy? Okay, so like I always say, we want to make sure we're using our nerds and stonies, making sure we have a clinical infection, nerds for local, our local, local infection, and stonies for our deep spreading infection. So antimicrobials, we're, we can use them for prevention of infection in patients who are at risk of wound infection, okay? So if there's some reason or comorbidity that's putting this patient at high risk, we can use it as a preventative measure, okay? Um, we can use it as a treatment of localized wound infection. Um, local treatment of wound infections in cases of spreading or systematic wound infection along with a systematic antibiotic. So if we have 
um, on our chart of nerds and stonies. So our stonies is for deep spreading infection. We need an antibiotic for this, but we can also use um, a topical together. Okay, so we, we would use both of them um, while treating the wound. Once antimicrobials are started, the effect of antimicrobial dressings on the wound must be closely monitored. A failure to respond or fail or further, if the wound starts deteriorating, you need to do a full reassessment to exclude any conditions um, other than infection and may indicate that we need an alternative approach. Okay. Mm -hmm. For wounds that do approve, uh, do start improving. Um, the antimicrobials should be continued for 14 to 21 days. At this time, um, we need to do a reassessment. Normally, they can be discontinued um, for the most part, but we still need to continue to observe these wounds after we remove the antimicrobials um, to make sure that the bacterial load doesn't start reoccurring, okay? So not all wounds are going to respond to topical antimicrobial dressings, okay? In such cases, we should be taking bacterial cultures um, to determine the appropriate treatment. This way we are also knowing any resistant strains of bacteria within the wound, okay? If it's a local infection, we should be using antimicrobial dressings. Um, when there is no longer signs and symptoms of local infection or spreading infection, the antimicrobial dressings should be discontinued, okay? So we should stop using them because uh, once again, they do have some tissue toxicity with them. So when we don't need them, we don't use them, okay? If the, the wound continues to have signs and symptoms of infection, a systematic antibiotic should be considered. Now, patients with um, conditions that are going to put them at higher risk of infection, such as poor vascularity, immune system compromised, um, a lot of times clinicians will put the patient on uh, an oral antibiotic um, because in these cases, the conditions may be masking the signs of infection. Okay, so they might not have the full signs of infection, but the infection is there and taking over. Okay, blood cultures should be taken of wounds which um, are assessed to have spreading or systematic infection. Okay, so we know what we're dealing with and we can treat it appropriately. A lot of times they'll treat this with an IV broad spectrum antibiotic. Topical antimicrobials should also be used, okay, to help reduce local bio burden. So I hope this video did give you a better idea of the different antimicrobials we can be using and when we should be using them and when we shouldn't be using them, okay? Um, but that's all I have for this video, guys. I hope to catch you in my next one. Bye for now.